So in this video, I'll provide a brief introduction to the topic we call engineering economics. The content of this course really centers around a concept referred to as the time value of money. And the time value of money really has to do with payments and interest rates and time periods and how the value of money changes um, as time passes. You really need to wrap your head around this concept of uh, the time value of money. It's uh, very common for students in business to learn time value of money, usually in an introductory finance course. But for us, we're really learning the time value of money concepts for another reason. And we're learning that for decision making and for decision making as it relates to something we call engineering economics. How this course relates to the more technical part of engineering uh, really occurs in, in two ways. The first way is the approach that we use to solving problems that are really of a financial nature, but we take a, a an, somewhat of an engineering approach to these. And by that I mean we look at the real world as sort of a complicated thing and we construct a simplified model of the world. That model in engineering economics usually takes the form of something we call a cash flow diagram, which you'll learn how to construct later in the course. But much like we, we do in engineering, we have, can have a very complicated situation, a complicated structure. We create a simplified model that we can then write equations, we can do some calculations, and take the conclusions that we make as a result of those con uh, uh, calculations back into the complicated real world. In engineering economics, um, uh, the assumptions and the simplifications that we make are all generally financial. Some of them are business related. Some of them are relate to uh, guessing a value for interest rates, things like that. In engineering, um, the things that we might guess at might be material properties of um, a particular metal or if we don't have an actual test uh, that gives us the exact number. So some of our assumptions and the use of a model to represent the real world is very similar to the way we approach problems in the technical parts of engineering. The other way that um, uh, really engineering economics is connected to the technical part of engineering is in the application of the results and the conclusions we draw from the calculations in the model. So um, a lot of what we can calculate in engineering economics uh, relates to should we invest in a particular construction project? Should we uh, buy or lease a certain type of equipment for our engineering purposes? Should a company replace a large piece of equipment uh, with a new piece of equipment? These are all um, uh, situations where the conclusions have a very strong effect on the practice of engineering. Also, when we do the calculations, uh, in engineering economics using the skills that we learn related to the time value of money, we don't only use that information to make decisions. And that really relates to um, the management portion of engineering practice. So there may be other factors such as human factors, environmental factors that play into the actual decision that we make um, and the engineering economic analysis really just becomes one piece of all of the piece of it, pieces of information that we use to make a final decision in engineering. The last point uh, I'd like to make just as a, as a way of introduction is that many of the skills that we'll learn in this course, I find, um, are really more value to you as a student in your personal life than they will be in your engineering career. So it may be many years before you are doing 
financial analysis um, in the workplace as a practicing engineer, but everyone has loans, mortgages, um, everyone tries to buy investments, and the tools that we learn in this course really are quite valuable for that part of your, your life. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the course, and um, uh, I'll see you in the videos.